Hey, what's up? Dusk here. So I wanted to cover the recent dev stream for Texas Chainsaw Massacre that happened a few days ago. Most people have some videos up on this already, but there was some really specific stuff I wanted to talk about. But I'm going to go ahead and cover the whole thing, but it's going to be really quick because I don't want this to be too awful long. So they've got a big patch coming that's going to be about 150 fixes, but if this is anything like the 250 fix patch, there's only going to be a fraction of that, but that's fine because even like 30 bug fixes is still a pretty hefty amount. Uh, let's see. the uh, Chat. Uh, oh, no. Never mind. That was just something goofy. I'm not even going to comment on it. Uh, they're going to buff struggling for victims where it's no longer going to be an instant kill. Instead, a second family member will just be able to strike the victim to do some damage. We don't know how much. They use the term chip damage. Uh, I think it's probably going to be pretty close to full damage. If it's not, um, struggle could end up being like this crazy OP busted mechanic. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, another thing, too, here. Uh, this came up. Uh, this is like the fourth point I want to bring up here. Uh, okay, gun. you got to stop, like, explaining how to do an exploit before the patch that fixes it comes out. This is the third time. Uh, that y'all have explained how to do an exploit before the patch is out. So uh, it just causes the exploit to spread. Let's see. Next, they had, uh, oh, they wanted to buff the instant start on the chainsaw so that it was more like how they envisioned, so that like the stealth Bubba is more of a thing. They also want to buff how fast uh, Bubba destroys barricades because they want that to be more meaningful play at the high end. Uh, they're also going to change the blood trail. I personally am not a fan of this. They wanted to make it like it was kind of on console, where it was basically just a solid red line that was drawn on the ground to where the victim went. Uh, they seemed to think that it may it was a lot more fun thematically, but to me, this is just yet another change where they punish stealth players and then claim that they don't like to put in punishment. Uh, and meanwhile, rushing stays as this super high reward, super low risk mechanic that is just absolutely destroying, you know, the high end meta of the game. So not a big fan with that. I'm sure it's going to look cool having blood spray all over the place. I do love how much blood the game sprays, but not a big fan of uh, kicking stealth uh, in the in the shin yet again. Uh, Poison Claw for Nancy's got a bug that they're going to fix, and that should tame it down. I kind of agree. I think the bug fix is probably enough to bring Poison Claw into check, hopefully. Uh, they're also going to nerf a few perks based on usage. Now, originally, this was supposed to be a huge perk rework patch, but it seems like the idea of reworking all the perks has been pushed back, and instead, this is going to be a large quality of life bug fix and balance patch. And in my opinion, that was a really fucking good idea. Um, this is a big win because a lot of things are getting addressed that need to be addressed and trying to rework all the perks is something that does need to be done, but I don't think it's a critical issue um, that needs to happen right now. Some of this other stuff. So that was pretty good. Uh, some of the perks they mentioned, reworking, confusing mechanic, or not, not reworking, sorry, wrong word, uh, tweaking. Confusing mechanic, easily tuckered out, uh, choose flight, bomb squad. They're checking out scout. They don't have anything lined up for it yet, but um, they're lining up some nerfs for it probably in the future. Uh, now, here's um, one of the big things I wanted to talk about, and that's the Danny changes. They've got some nerfs, but they've also got some buffs for him. Now, I think the nerf is going to outweigh the buff, um, but let me explain what they are. So the first buff is that you're no longer going to need to inspect the thing you want to tamper, which means your tamper is going to be one click faster than it was before. And then let me see here. Uh, the other buff is going to be to instant inspect, which is a crazy thing to want to buff. They're, they're not kind of doing it intentionally, but what they're going to do is right now you gain knowledge, you know, from like TVs and radios quite a bit. And then from like lamps and toolboxes, not so much, right? And what they want to do is they said they want to even that out. Now, usually when you say even out, that means bring stuff down and bring stuff up. So that means that lamps and toolboxes 
are going to be worth more, while TVs and radios are going to be worth less. And they mentioned all the other things you can inspect, and they labeled everything from, you know, least to most. So it's not going to be perfectly even. It's still going to be skewed, but I think it's going to be less skewed than before. Uh, so what they want is for the Danny player to have to run around and hit more objects. Well, if you're not instant Danny, having to hit more objects is going to make you run even slower. If you are instant inspect Danny, this means you can bounce around on toolboxes and lamps and get a, a larger amount of knowledge than you got before, potentially speeding you up. And if not speeding you up, definitely making it safer because leather faces can't just like beeline to radios and TVs and hot spots for the early rush Danny, right? They'll now um, not have a real meaningful way to shut down the, the Danny rush, right? So that's a bit of a buff. Now, there's two, um, two big nerfs, though. Uh, the first big nerf is that anything you inspect, you can't tamper. So if you want to tamper the pressure tank, then you need to go in, then you can't inspect the pressure tank. So if you want a big chunk of knowledge, you're going to have to hit the fuse box or um, the battery or generator or something else, right? You can't inspect the pressure tank if that's what you want to tamper. And that is going to slow down like the beeline straight to, because you will have to bounce around on lamps and toolboxes. But you're also going to have to veer out and hit something else like, you know, fuse box and then go to pressure tank. The other nerf, and this one I think is even the most significant, is that now Danny, when he does the instant tamper, he can't just click, click, and then leave while the gauge fills up with knowledge. You actually have to stay on the pressure tank or fuse box or whatever. And you actually have to watch the animation of the gauge filling up before you can leave. This means that family can hit you and interrupt you, uh, whereas before, you couldn't stop Danny. You just couldn't stop him. You could hit him, but it was all instant, so there was no way to actually interrupt or counterplay the instant tamper. But now there will be, and that's huge in my opinion. So we'll see what the values are on the knowledge. I don't know how much they evened things out. Uh, like This is definitely going to require some playtesting. But overall, it is definitely, like, Danny's power level, I think, will come down. And uh, this, might be, uh, this might be enough. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, they talked about some of the new characters coming out. They said new characters, they always want to feel unique and then bring new mechanics into the game. That's something they want to strive for with every single character release, which is crazy, but also awesome. Uh, they also talked about their weird creation process. Uh, they said they realize that nobody else really probably appreciates or care how they do things because it's like this weird immersive thing where they like listen to music that they think the character might have listened to. Like they really just kind of almost like method act and try and get inside the head of their characters. And they say it's like a really long drawn out process, which kind of sucks because it means that making new characters takes longer than it probably should. But they said that's just kind of like how they like to do things. It's just their creative process. And I'll tell you what, like, I think it's fine. It, it does suck. The, this is kind of a lengthy way of doing things. But creating things is a creative process. And everybody's got a different creative process. And you have to really step into that. And if this is what works for them, then knock yourself out, I say. Uh, and then they talked about using the word nerf. It wasn't really a big deal. Um, so everything they talked about in the dev stream, including these new characters, a new map, uh, all this other stuff, is all coming out sometime over the next 90 days. So we have a lot of stuff to look forward to, um, including the first patch hitting here on February 6th. So that was kind of cool. One thing I really appreciate about Gun is they're really good about communicating timelines. Other devs are actually really bad at this. Um, Gun might be one of the best dev teams at communicating timelines, and, and that's something that they've done from the start. Uh, they're going to add a museum mode, which is a lot like the cabin mode in Friday the 13th, if you're familiar. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they got two more characters coming. Okay, a couple of cosmetics. Shirtless Johnny, which this is weird. They're going to make it free. And they've got a Bride Sissy cosmetic, which will also be free. 
I think that's a little odd. I feel like if they're going to give stuff away for free, it should be characters and that the cosmetics is where they should try to make their money. But uh, I think at this point, I think Gunn is just trying to get some goodwill out to the community. I don't think this is a marketing or business model that they're shooting for. I think they're just... Um, they just want some goodwill for the players. I think they want to, you know, say, hey, sorry, there's a lot of bugs. Things have been rough. We know. We want to, you know, throw some stuff out to you guys for free, which is always cool. So, like, again, that's something to be appreciated. Uh, they showed off the new map, which is a sawmill. It's going to have a lot of verticality to it. I think four levels in total, counting the basement, of course. But it looked super cool. Uh, Sunny buffs coming, and Sissy is being looked at for some potential buffs. Uh, they're only going to do reworks as a last resort. I think that's fair. Uh, they're also going to nerf sound following victims as an attempt to make door jukes more viable again. In my opinion, I don't think this is going to work because when you go for any kind of a stealth juke, everything happens, you know, in split seconds when you're talking about high end play and jukes, right? And a family member that's chasing you only needs to see that you've cut a left or right direction. And then with map knowledge and game sense, they're going to be able to tell what you're up to, right? So I think what they need to do is make all the doors like the basement doors. Basement doors, um, the sound does not stick to the victim at all, right? Uh, I like the idea of running through bone charms or by chickens and having that really stick to the victim for a bit, you know? Something that really... Um, helps make uh, rushing risky, right? You need some kind of risk in a rush, and right now there's almost none, so it's nice. So hopefully um, after this change goes through, because I'm pretty sure it's going to fall flat, that they'll take another look at it and do some changes. Or, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this will actually end up being like a nice happy medium. We'll have to see, but that's just my kind of two cents on that. Uh, and then they talked a little bit about being against penalties and preferring motivation and stuff like that. I'm just going to throw in my two cents on that. Uh, they already tried this with Friday the 13th, where they tried to motivate people to stick in the match even after they were dead just to watch. And if they did, they got a bunch of bonus experience at the end. And I know that seems like motivation, but how it felt to the player is wow, I don't get to play the game because I'm dead early. And if I leave now to go to my next match, I get all my bonus XP taken away from me, right? Like that was a brutal punishment to throw at players. Uh, and that's the thing about motivation mechanics is their punishments too, because what happens is, is anytime you deny motivation, that's the punishment is the denial of the thing. Think about it this way, like if uh, you have a horse and you have the whole carrot on a stick in front of the horse, if the horse doesn't go where you want it to, you deny the horse its food. That's a pretty brutal punishment when you, you know look at it that way, right? So um, I think they just need to get over it. Uh, you can't leave Rush as a high reward, low risk mechanic and expect to ever really balance um, the metagame for TCM or restore the things that make it truly fun which is like really tense, um, you know, gameplay. Oh, let's see. They clarified some stuff about map variations and mods. Uh, each map will probably only ever come with two variations, and that's just times a day. Uh, reminders, please submit bugs, uh, bug tickets. Everything helps. Uh, they're going to try and update the reporting system. Good. That needs to be, you know, really needs to be done. They're not really big into battle passes. They kind of prefer earnable currency instead, so expect that. Uh, if you want to know what happened to Maria, go play the game Pedals. It's a free game you can download. Um, Let's see some other stuff here. Uh, they confirmed no duplicate characters. They don't like any sort of min-maxing at all. So every character, again, that comes out will be completely unique. Uh, some people asked about why they can't get cross-play for old gen. Like, uh, PlayStation 4 cannot cross-play with everybody else, and the uh, Xbox equivalent can't either. And the question was, is, well, like, Dead by Daylight does. And the devs didn't really expand on it, because, again, they had, like, an hour and a half long dev stream. They were covering as much as they could. So they just, they were just clear. They said, it's just not coming. Sorry. Uh, but I'll explain for you why it's not coming. It's because... 
PlayStation 4 and uh, the Xbox equivalent cannot run the client everybody else is on. The system is too slow. So they have a separate client with stripped out visuals that runs on that. It's, it's a different client that runs different. It's not compatible with our client. And the only way to make it compatible would be to completely strip out and trash like the main content or the, the main game and bring it down to a, um, an, you know, an outdated game. The thing with Dead by Daylight is Dead by Daylight's been out for years. I mean, almost a decade. Think about that. And its visuals are not as sophisticated. Dead by Daylight is a nice looking game with an amazing art team and they make it look pretty good. But a lot of the lighting elements and stuff like that just aren't there. That's why Dead by Daylight has always struggled with making shadowy maps and, and playing with darkness. They eventually just had to light all their maps up and make it where you could kind of see on everything, right? Um, because they just don't have the light engine and mechanics and, and all that stuff. So it's just an older, slightly more dated game that runs on more stuff than TCM does. That's just how it is. It's a it's a technical wall, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, they talked about... God, I missed something here. There was a huge thing I really wanted to talk about. Uh, I'll come back to it right here at the end. Uh, what was the other thing here? <laughs> Oh, yeah, so uh, Wes wanted to do a call to action. This is probably already up. They wanted to put a uh, thread up on Reddit because they wanted to tweak custom matches. They wanted to add a whole bunch of settings that you could add, remove, or do whatever in custom matches. And uh, if you had some requests, find that uh, thread on Reddit and uh, chime in there. And then, of course, on the, the 6th, they're also going to go ahead and remove the lobby timer. They talked about the lobby bug that prevents backfill, which is a really critical issue, and that's going to be dangerous with the timer removal. Um, but they said they're aware of it, and they've been throwing everything, uh, you know, including the kitchen sink at it, uh, including the kitchen sink at it. They've even apparently um, requested help from other developers on it. Uh, that's what Wes said anyway. It seems pretty crazy, but um, it, it is apparently their their highest issue and they're just really, really struggling with it. Okay, there was something else here, though. This is literally the biggest thing that I wanted to talk about. Whatever, I remember what it is. I don't need to read it in the notes. Okay, so there were a couple of instances in um, the dev stream where I noticed that they had a question and you could kind of tell that they wanted to get a little defensive, right? Which if you watch my last video, that was one of the biggest things I critiqued gun on was the way that they communicate, you know, getting over defensive, engaging with toxic commentary and, you know, stuff that they, they shouldn't have been all that stuff. Right. Well, in this dev stream, I noticed a, a, pretty strong effort to not do that. And to me, this uh, was the biggest thing about the dev stream because I now saw like that light at the end of the tunnel come back. They've got time, plenty of time to fix and save TCM. It was just a matter of like, could they? Well, I think they can now, right? Because part of this is going to be really, really being able to establish good communication and working with the player base and the community. And you can't do that when you're being like defensive and, um, you know, maybe acting like some questions are stupid or something like that. And they, they were really good. I think I saw Wes start to get a little defensive. They were talking about getting clowned on for something they said, but Matt was like, you know, he, he was like really quick to like, kind of like tone it down. And I think Wes caught on. He was like, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I want to give like some credit to, to Matt. And of course, like Wes got on board with it uh, after, you know, Matt kind of started to like, no, 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 no. Uh, Cause Matt even like toward the end of it, um, he was like, yeah, we got, we got clowned on a little bit. And rightfully so. Now I don't think Matt necessarily needed to add the rightfully so at the end that they deserve to be clowned on. But it just showed that, like, that's how far they're willing, you know, to bend over back, right? Like, they just, they really, really want that good communication there. You know, they're, 
they're really willing to do whatever it takes to make TCM work. So uh, to me, there's there's a lot of light at the end of the tunnel now. Like that was so encouraging. It definitely did not go unnoticed. But yeah, that pretty much covers, you know, the vast majority of the dev stream. Thanks for watching, guys. I don't want this to get on too long, so we're going to go ahead and call it here. We'll catch you in the next one.